hello, we're already up to day four of the probability unit. So I had two questions that people asked me to go over on last night's homework. So that's what we're going to start with. Addition rule of probability. If you flip over to the back, that's where the most of the questions were. Number four was the major one. So the FHS surveys the families of its students and determines the following. The families chosen at random, the probability that they own a dog is 0.64. The probability that they own a cat is 0.32. The probability that they own both a dog and a cat is 0.11. It says create a table or Venn diagram for this situation. So I'm going to do both, depending on what you prefer. And here's what a Venn diagram would be. So we've got two different scenarios. We've got all about if they own a dog, so we'll call dog over here, and cat over here. Okay, the probability that they own both is 0.11. So I can put that in the Venn diagram right away. And I think most of you got that. Remember, 0.64, the probability they own a dog, does not go here. You have to do 0.64 minus 0.11 because the whole dog circle is 0.64. So really 0.53 should go there. And by the same token, 0.32 does not go here. The whole cat circle is 0.32. So you've got to do 0.32 minus 0.11. So it should be 0.21 right here. Now don't forget, how do you get what goes on the outside? Well, the whole probabilities of anything, so the whole chart has to add up to 1. It's a probability, uh, probability Venn diagram. So do 1 minus 0.53 minus 0.11 minus 0.21. And I get 0.15 on the outside. Okay? That's what a Venn diagram will look like. Now, if you are someone who prefers to do a table, like me, this is how you would set that up. You would have cat, not cat. And then up here, you'd have dog, not dog. And then don't forget, you've got totals everywhere. So when I fill this in, again, the reason I like tables is because I can put all these numbers in right away. The probability they own a dog is 0.64. So go to the total of the dog column and put 0.64. The probability they own a cat is 0.32. The total of the cat column is 0.32. The probability they own both is 0.11. Cat and dog, 0.11. And if it's a probability chart, you know this spot right here in the corner is always 1. So now I'm going to fill in the rest. So I can do 0.64 minus 0.11, just like I did over here, and get that this is 0.53. And I can do 0.32 minus 0.11 and get this is 0.21. That's the same as the histogram. Now I can get what goes here by doing um, 1 minus 0.32, which comes out to be 0.68. And I can do 0.68 minus 0.53, which is 0.15 right here. And I can either do 1 minus 0.64 or 0 0.21 plus 0.15. Either way, I get 0.36, so I know that I'm right. Okay, now let's see how these get answered. I determine the following probabilities. Again, I'm going to do it different ways. Probability I want a dog or a cat. So that'd be anything in either of these circles. If I just do 0 0.53 plus 0 0.11 plus 0 0.21, you'll get that just by taking whatever's in either circle, if you had a Venn diagram. If you're over here, you're going to take anything in the dog column and anything in the cat row. But you're not going to count the totals. But if you see those things I put in yellow, I'd have 0 0.21, 0 0.11, 0 0.53. It's the same thing. So that's how these look. If I do it up here, I'll get 0 0.53 plus 0 0.11 plus 0 0.21. 
so 0.85. Now I could also use the formula. Yesterday the formula was probability of dog plus probability of cat minus the probability of dog and cat. That would be easy to do because they give me all those. Probability of dog is 0.64 or I can look at the totals, 0.64. Probability of cat is 0.32 minus the probability of dog and cat which is the overlap, 0.11. That's basically doing, you can see in the table, the same thing, because I'm taking the total plus the total, but in doing that, I would have counted the 0.11 twice, which is, again, why that formula works the way it does. And if you do 0.64 plus 0.32 minus 0.11, you get exactly 0.85. So either way is fine. Now this is easier if you think about what it means. This means not dog and not cat. In my Venn diagram, where is that going to be? 0.15. Not in either circle. In the table, you just look at not dog and not cat. And they intersect right here, 0.15. Now the last one, I think, is what gave people the most trouble. Dog or not cat. So there's different ways to think about it. Dog would be, if I use the table, 0.11 plus 0.53. Not cat would be this row. I've already got the 0.53. I need the plus 0.15. And I get 0.11 plus 0.53 plus 0.15. 0.79. Venn diagram, I think, takes more thought. You want anything in dog, so 0.21, sorry, 0.53 and 0.11, and anything not in cat. So I've already counted these. The only other thing not in cat is 0.15. How would the formula work? You could do probability of dog plus probability of not cat minus the probability of dog and not cat. Let's look at the table. Probability of dog is 0.64. Probability of not cat is 0.68 over here. Minus the probability of dog and not cat. This part I count twice is 0.53. And I think it's no big surprise if I do 0.64 plus 0.68 minus 0.53, that 0.79 should come up. Okay, so I hope it doesn't mess you up that I'm showing you multiple ways to do it. I'm trying to give you multiple options. I generally gravitate towards formulas unless I have a table and Venn diagram already drawn. The other one that someone asked quick was number five. Of the works of art at a large gallery, 59% are paintings, 83% are for sale. So when a work of art is selected at random, the probability that's painting be A and sale be B. So part A, I think everyone got. Probably that it's A, that it's a painting. They've already said that is 0.59. Probability that it's for sale, probability B is 0.83. Now here they just give you the last missing piece in order to do this formula. If I want to do the probability of A or B, use the formula. We don't need a table or Venn diagram. It's probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So we've got A and B from up here, use them as decimals, so 0.59 plus 0.83 minus the probability of A and B, which is 0.51, and that'll give you the answer. 0.53 plus 0.83 minus 0.51, or 91%. All right, so again, I would strongly encourage go to the formulas first. If you have all the pieces of information, that's by far the fastest. Second step, table or Venn diagram. Table is what I always lean towards. Okay, let's go over to today's warm-up. Numbers chosen at random from the set of the first 10 natural numbers. That's 1 through 10. Determine all of these probabilities. 
So we'll go ahead and give it a pause and see if you can do it. All right, let's see how you did. Now you might have gotten confused at the first one, probability of prime. It's been a while since we talked about prime numbers. Prime numbers, you remember, only have two factors, one in itself. So the probability of primes, this could be two is prime. One doesn't count because the definition of prime, it, it has to have exactly two factors, one in, in itself. One only has one factor, just one. So 2 is prime because 1 and 2 are the only thing that divide it. 3 is prime because 1 and 3. 4 isn't because it's got 1, 4, and 2. But 5 is. And the only other one is 7. So the probability that's prime out of those first 10 numbers is 4 out of 10, which we reduce to 2 fifths. Probability that's divisible by 3. Well, out of 1 through 10, what is that? 3, 6, or 9. So 3 out of 10. Odd and divisible by 3. Now with these, we haven't really talked about and probability formulas yet, but I should just be able to keep track of them. How many are odd and divisible by 3? Well, 3, 6, 9 are odd. The one that's also divisible by 3 is just 6. Oh, sorry, div divisible... Let's try it again. Divisible by 3 is 3, 6, 9. The only one that's odd is 3 and 9. I was thinking even. So that's 2 out of 10, or 1 fifth. Odd or divisible by 3. We can do this two ways, because we know an or formula. So I'm going to list out any number that's either odd or divisible by 3, or both. So 1's odd, 2's out. 3 is both of them, that counts. 4 is out. 5 is odd. 6 is divisible by 3. 7 is odd. And 9 is both. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 10. Or 3 fifths. Okay, now this is one where you could do probability of odd plus probability divisible by 3 minus the probability of odd and divisible by 3. Let me stay consistent. And the only reason you might want to go that route is because we do have a formula for ors, and I can find all these probabilities pretty easily. Probability of odd, we know, is 1 half. Probability divisible by 3, we did right here. That's 3 tenths minus the probability that's odd and divisible by 3, we did right over here, that's 1 fifth. Let's see if that gives me the same answer. So 1 half plus 3 tenths minus 1 fifth. And I'm hoping to see 3 fifths. And I do, 0. 0.6, that's 3 fifths. So if you like formulas, go it, do it. Now these last two are actually what we're talking about today. I want to see what you would do with it. Divisible by 3, given that it's odd. So this second part essentially restricts my sample space. So given that it's odd mean I can, means I can only look at 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And of those, the probability that's divisible by 3, there's two of them. So this is actually going to be 2 out of 5. Two of them are divisible by three out of the restriction of the ones that are divisible by the given they're odd. So knowing that, uh, given that it's divisible by three, again, here's the given. Given that it's divisible by three it means it's restricted to three, six, or nine. So now knowing that already, what's the probability that's odd? It's two out of three. Now you'll notice we'll talk more about this later, this new given piece is not commutative. When I flipped the order of what was given, I didn't get the same answer. Did you know fortune cookies were actually invented in America in 1918 by Charles Jung? Who knew? All right, we're ready to do today's notes. That Those last two things in the warm-up lead us right into these. This is called conditional probability. 
anytime you see the word given, we're talking about conditional probability. So from the set of the first 10 natural numbers, what is the probability that's divisible by 3 given that it's odd? Again, this given part restricts sample space. So given that it's odd means I'm not looking at 1 through 10 anymore. I'm only looking at 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So from that set, the probability that's divisible by 3 is 2 out of 5. And then probability that's odd, given that it's divisible by 3, means I've restricted to the set 3, 6, 9 of the ones that are divisible by 3, of those given ones. There's 2 that are odd. So 2 out of the 3. So these two problems are called conditional probability. And the official definition is it's the probability of an event occurring given that another event occurs first. And there's a new formula for this, too. The probability of A given B, so that line means given, probability of A given B is equal to the probability that both things happen, A and B, divided by the probability of the given thing happening, B. The probability of A given B is the probability that they both happen. So then it's kind of like you divide out the probability of the thing that you know already happened, happened. So it divides out some of the sample space. If it was written the other way, the probability of B given A, you'd still do the probability of both of them happening on top. So A and B, B and A, that's the same thing. But this time, what would you think you would divide by? The probability of A. And I only show you these two different formulas because I want to emphasize that you divide by the piece that's given. You're dividing out what you already know. So use the conditional probability formula to calculate the two probabilities we did above. Now, above, it was easier for me just to kind of restrict my sample space and look at that. But how would the formulas work? Because sometimes you won't be able to do that. This first one should be the probability that you're divisible by 3 and odd divided by the probability of odd. Probability of both happening divided by the probability of the thing that you know happens. So probability, I'm going back to 1 through 10. The probability that it, it's divisible by 3 and odd. So let's write this out. Here's my sample space again. So from this, the probability that it's both divisible by 3 and odd at the same time. We've got um, 1. and 2. So we've got 2 that are divisible by 3 and odd out of the 10 divided by the probability that it's odd is 5 out of the 10 and I have a complex fraction. So I would multiply top and bottom by 10 And I get two-fifths, which is the same thing I got up top. Same idea over here. Probably that's odd given that it's divisible by 3. Probability that it's odd and divisible by 3 divided by the probability that you're divisible by 3. So odd and divisible by 3. Again, those are 3 and 9, so 2 out of 10. Divided by the probability that's divisible by 3. That's 3, 6, or 9, so that's 3 out of 10. Multiply both pieces by 10, because that's the complex fraction part of it. 
and you get two thirds. So that was just to show you that the formulas do work. Obviously with a scenario like this, what we did in the warm up or up top is probably easier than using the formula. But normally you're going to see questions like this, where the formula is going to be a huge part. Given the probability of A is 0.45, probability of B is 0.35, and probability of A and B is 0 0.10, find the probability of A given B. Conditional probability. So write the probability of A given B in proper notation. That would just be this. Probability of A given B. Remember the line means given. Now use the formula to find the probability. So that's going to be the probability that they both happened, A and B but then divide out the probability that what was given, probability of B. This is great, we can just plug in the numbers. So 0 0.10 divided by 0.35, we don't even need the probability of A. 0 0.10 divided by 0.35, and the answer is big long decimal. Let's see if we can fraction it so we don't have to round it. Yep, two sevenths. Okay, ease peas, I hope. Okay, let's do page two. Given the probability of B given A is 0.85, and the probability of A and B is 0.6, find the probability of A. Okay, so here they might sometimes want you to fill in different pieces of the formula. If they're giving you a conditional probability, write out that formula. The probability of B given A would be the probability of B and A divided by what? The given piece, probability of A. Okay, so now just plug in what you know. Here you know the answer. So 0.85 equals, again, the probability of B and A is always going to be the same as A and B, just saying it differently. So 0 0.60 over the probability of A. And then we can cross multiply. So 0 0.60 equals 0.85 times P of A. So divided by 0.85, we'll get that probability of A that we want. And then I can just do 0 0.60 divided by 0.85. And I get a big long decimal again. So let's see if we can math frack it. 12 seventeenths. So the probability of A is 12 seventeenths. Okay, so that's just using the formula a different way. Given the probability of M is 0.72, probability of T is 0.24, and the probability of M and T is 0.23, let's find all of these. First, the probability of T given M. Well, if I use the formula, that'd be the probability of T and M divided by the probability of what? M. So the probability of T and M, TUM, is the same as M and T, so that's 0.23, divided by the probability of M, 0 0.72, 0.23, divided by 0.72, math frac, 23 out of 72. I probably see where that would come from without a calculator. Now let's do the other way. Find the probability of M given that I know T occurs. So that's the probability of M and T, like the bank, over the probability of the given T. The probability of M and T is 0.23 over the probability of T is 0.24. And guess what it's going to be without my calculator? Right, just 23 out of 24. Now the purpose of this one was to check this. Does the probability of T given M equal the probability of M given T? Nope. Because T given M was 23 out of 72, and M given T was 23 out of 24. Those are obviously not equal. And we kind of mentioned that in the warm-up too. That's just to show you that conditional probability is not commutative. It matters the order. It matters what's been given. Which makes sense because the formula is different. Okay. 
So everything we've done so far is kind of theoretical. We haven't done a situation. Let's go back to this table we did yesterday. The probability that you're male and going to college and female and going to college. And this is a table that tells you how many fall in each situation. Okay, so this isn't a probability table. It's just a number of people table. And here they've listed the totals for us already, so that's good. But remember, if they don't list totals, you always want to list those in. Determine the following probabilities. Probability that you're female. Well, the total number of females in here are 22 out of the total possible or total amount of people is 52. And 22 out of 52 reduces to 1126. Probability that you're female and going to college. So look at female and going to college. There's 13 out of the total of 52. And that would reduce to one-fourth. Probability that you're going to college. Okay, the probability that we're going to college is 29 out of the total of 52. And I don't think that reduces at all. Now I'm adding the new stuff. Probability that you're going to college given that you're female. Let's apply the formula first. This would be the probability of college and female divided by the probability of female. And we can use this over here. Probability of college and female was one-fourth over probability of female was 11 out of 26. And it's a complex fraction, but not an easy one. So let's just do one-fourth divided by 11.26, oops, need another parenthesis here, or I could use alpha y equals, let's do that, one-fourth divided by alpha y equals again, 11.26 gets me to 13 out of 22. Okay, now is there an easier way to do part D? So since I had a table, do I have to use the formula? If you remember when I went over the homework questions at the start of the video, I had that OR formula. I showed you I didn't have to use the formula if I had a table. I could just kind of count smartly. And there is an easier way. So if I want the probability that we're going to college, given female. So the given part, that's what's known. That's what we're restricting to. Remember earlier when I was kind of restricting my sample space? That's what given female is. So given female means I'm only looking at the female column. So everything else doesn't matter anymore. So this given part goes in denominator. If I'm given that they're female, then I can only consider these 22 people. So that goes down here. So now I want the probability of those 22, probability they go to college, let's just this number right here, 13. And you can see that I got the same answer. So if that makes sense to you, that's way easier. College given female means out of the female column, out of the 22, 13 go to college. So let me just put these notes in. This is number of females in college over my sample space, which is just now the total number of females. All right, so if you have a table, that might be the easier route to go. All right, last page. Well, what if you have a Venn diagram instead of a table? In a certain class of 27 students, the following data is obtained and expressed in a Venn diagram. Find the probability that you're brown hair given blue eyes. So we could use the formula, probability of brown and blue 
divided by the probability of blue, or we could use what I'm restricted to. If I use the formula, I would say brown and blue. So brown and blue is the intersection. So that's 1 out of the 27 divided by probably that you're blue. That's anybody in the blue circle, which is an 8. There's a total of 9 in the blue circle. So it's 9 out of the 27. So if I was using complex fraction, I'd end up with 1 ninth. The 27s would cancel out. Or you can think I'm restricted to blue eyes. So looking just in the blue circle, how many in the blue circle have brown hair? One out of the total number in the blue circle is nine. So again, if you're restricted to the blue circle, then your total is just the numbers in the blue circles, which is a nine. And if you want how many of those people have brown hair, that's the, this one right here. Find the probability that a student chosen at random has blue eyes, given that they have brown hair. So that's the other way. Probability that you have blue eyes, given brown hair. So now I'm restricted to the brown circle. So of the people here, how many total are in this circle? 15, so that goes on the bottom. How many have blue eyes? Just that one. So that'd be 1 15. Okay, so that's how you can do it with the Venn diagram. Or again, here you could use the formula. Probability of blue and brown divided by the probability of brown. Blue and brown is 1 out of 27. Probability of brown is everyone in the brown circle, so that's 15 out of 27. And you can see how that would end up being 1 15th. All right, last part. The formula for conditional probability is what we've been seeing all day. Solve this probability, solve this formula for probability of A and B. So if I wanted to get probability of A and B alone, I could just cross multiply. 1 times the probability of A and B would be probability of A and B equals, multiply this, would be probability of A times the probability of B given A. So what I just solved for was a formula for and probability. We don't have a probability for and yet. We only have it for or. So you can kind of see I just derived this formula really quickly from the conditional one. But that's not really what we're talking about. We'll come back to this another day. But just keep this in mind. Because now I kind of have a probability formula for and also. All right, now this last box is going to set us up for what we're going to talk about in the next video. We say two events, A and B, are independent if the following is true. The probability of B given A equals the probability of B, and the probability of A given B equals the probability of A. Think about what that means. Interpret this definition. The probability of B happening, given that A happens, is just the probability of B happening. The probability of A happening, given that B happened, is just the probability of A happening. Essentially, it's saying knowing that the probability of A happened had no effect on the probability of B, because it's still the same as what it would be normally. Knowing that B happened has no effect on the probability of A, because it's still the same as what it would be normally. So basically, this is saying A and B, those two events, have no effect on each other. The fact that A occurs so the fact that A occurred doesn't mean anything about B occurring. and vice versa.
So the probability that the fact that B occurred didn't have any effect on whether or not A occurred. That's what independent means. The probability of something happening didn't affect the probability of another thing happening. This is to be continued tomorrow. All right, so that's it. To the homework a shot, and as always, email with questions. Good luck.